Hi guys, welcome back to Naked Security Live. I'm Alice and I'm joined by Jack. Hello folks, Alice is going to mention the podcast. I've just got a theory, go on, tell them all about it. I do it. love to promote the podcast, so we have another episode live and it's relevant today because we're talking about the yes. same topic that we covered this week, so do have a listen. Um, so today we're talking about Mozilla's introduction of DNS over HTTPS in their Firefox browser and then Google have followed suit today and doing the same with Chrome. So a lot of our listeners might know that uh, HTTPS is a secure way of browsing, but what is all this stuff about DNS and why is there controversy about it? Yeah, it, it, it kind of seems like the thing you shouldn't have to worry about, doesn't it? Right. So you, in fact, if you, if you don't know what DNS is, and we'll get to that in a moment, you might look at a headline that says, hey, Firefox is going to introduce something, something, something over HTTPS, and you kind of think, Hang on, Naked Security has been telling me use HTTPS for your, all your browsing because right. it encrypts the traffic so people can't snoop on you and it stops people fiddling with the replies so you get the truth back from the website. So why would any browser not have, any, have anything that wasn't HTTPS? Exactly. Now the deal here is that the thing that is now being put over HTTPS, a secure connection, by Firefox now will be done by default. Chrome will introduce it sort of semi by default shortly. The idea is that DNS is a thing called the domain name system. That's the bit that doesn't deal with your actual browsing, what you connect to and what you get back. Right. It deals with looking up where to find the server you want to go to. So okay. when you type in a web address like nakedsecurity.sophos.com mm -hmm. or www.example.org or something like that, before your browser can connect to that server by name, it has to get the so-called IP number, the internet protocol number, which is the way that computers decide which computer is talking to exactly what computer. Right. Now, instead of you having to remember 100 million different IP numbers, yeah. and also they move around, right? Because when you go to naked security, it's not just one server. Today right. it might be this server, that might be busy, it might get redirected okay. to a different server. So there is, we like to put in names, but at some point before you browse to that site, your computer has to translate that name into a number. And traditionally, that process called DNS, which is kind of invisible to most people, mm. usually your router at home or your ISP takes care of it. The problem is that although what you later browse to may be encrypted, looking up where you want to browse to is not encrypted. Uh, so it right. means that anyone who's sniffing your network traffic, like a rogue coffee shop, right. they won't be able to see what it's like imagine you're doing on a phone call mm -hmm. somebody can't hear what you're saying but they know who you called right okay or they know who called you mm -hmm. and the point is that because all of the lookups you do in every web page that's embedded in every other web page causes a dns lookup mm -hmm. anyone who's sniffing your traffic without that being encrypted gets a list of the people you chatted to over the last right. day week month year or whatever and why would that be a risk what could someone do with your browsing data well all they, it, it, it's kind of what's often called metadata, in other words, information about information. Right. So think of it in the context of phone calls. Imagine that I have no idea what you said to the people you called, but I get your telephone bill, which okay. says you called this number on this date for three minutes, you called this number on that date for 20 minutes and so forth. So you can imagine that Firstly, it gives me a good idea of the people you hang out with, what you're interested in, where you buy stuff, probably gives me the identity of your bank because it's pretty obvious that you're phoning the bank's number and so on. And it also means that I could get bogus records because I don't actually know what you said. I just know, oh look, there are all these phone numbers that Alice called. Right. And in there, maybe there are some wrong numbers you called. Okay. Or so, like in the web context, sites that you didn't get through to. Okay. Or the other, and you went, oh no, I don't want to go there after all. Or your browser blocked it, was it insecure. So the problem with someone getting a list of, your, of where you intended to browse is A, they do get a lot of information about you. Yeah. And B, they can make some really false inferences about yeah. you based on things, sites that you looked up but never did anything with. Okay. And so the theory is that it would be much better if we took that DNS traffic, the, the name lookup traffic, and made that encrypted as well. Right. And there are lots of different ways of doing that, lots of different protocols that support that. Mm -hmm. There's DNSSEC, there's DNS over TLS, and so on and so on. But none of them really took off. Mm -hmm. So what browser makers like Mozilla, like Google have done, is they figured, you know what? When you're browsing, the one thing that we're good at doing is HTTPS. 
Right. So why don't we use that same technology, encrypted connections, mm -hmm. in order to do the actual DNS lookups first. Right. So instead of letting your operating system do it, instead of letting the computer take care of it and maybe someone building up a list, the browser will do it. And the initial objections were, it's far too inefficient, HTTPS, the encryption will take time, whatever. But what we've discovered is actually you can do it pretty efficiently. Right, and okay. the reason you can do it efficiently is that we're all browsing to HTTPS. HTTPS sites these days. Yeah. Very few sites still are HTTP only. They get yeah. marked down for that. So actually, it turns out that with a little extra overhead, we get some extra privacy also right. in the theory. And I works. remember a conversation that we had about the padlock not always meaning that something is secure. So is that like a wrong indication of something having the padlock in the URL? So it's not and, actually. Well, that's yeah, it's sort of kind of a probably an important sideline. So it's not relevant to the DNS lookups, right. but it's relevant in general is that, yes, when you get an HTTPS connection, mm. your browser will show you a little padlock, yeah. and that means this connection is encrypted. And it's also what we call authenticated, meaning that when the reply comes back, no one along the way can fiddle with it without your browser spotting that it's been tempered with. Okay, now, the problem right. is that what the padlock says is you've connected to the server that you think you have. Oh, right, but it okay. doesn't say, oh, by the way, because this site is so important that it got an encryption certificate, you can therefore trust it. Okay. So it's controlling the connection, encrypting the connection, but it's not making any, it's not vouching mm. for the content of the site. I see. So what you often, well, you should be careful, don't, not often, but what has happened in the past is mm -hmm. even mainstream, well-known, perfectly trustworthy sites, Yeah. they've got a web certificate, it, it, it identifies the site in all its glory, but the site gets hacked. The crooks put some malware on the site, and of course, when you connect to it, you get the right name in the address bar, you get the uh, padlock, you get the certificate belonging uh, to the right, company okay. that operates the site, but the certificate is talking about the connection, it's not talking about okay. the traffic that's inside the connection. Important so it gives difference. people a false sense of security? I think, it, it, yeah. I think these days, it's. I think people are just saying, oh, I need to look for it being there, because if it's not there, yeah. I might be connected to an imposter site. The issue is really that if the padlock's not there, any traffic coming back to you or anything going out from you can be listened into by someone along the way and fiddled right. with on the way back. Okay. So imagine when you think when you're doing a bank transaction, yeah. in some ways, well you want it to be secret. You don't want everybody to be able to see what you're buying from whom. But yeah. actually What's even more important is that while you're doing the transaction, someone can't go in and tamper with it and make you spend money to a different account or change the amount you're paying. That's just as important. So that's what the padlock it's about, is about. It doesn't vouch for the validity or the content or the malware freeness of the actual stuff that you download. Yeah. It's important to remember that. So what's the controversy this week then? Why are some people saying that DNS is not a good you mean, why, why encry okay, encrypting it's good, therefore, why is DNS over HTTPS bad? Right. And one of the complaints, particularly about Mozilla's approach, is mm. that DNS over HTTPS, it, it does require more work on the part of the person who's running the DNS server, the server that does the lookups, because it has to support this HTTPS load. Right. And at the moment, there aren't that many services out there that do it. Okay. So, the, for example, the default, uh, service that Mozilla will use is a, a, a company called Cloudflare, which is a content man content delivery network. Okay. So their business is uh, getting people online, mm. not, not, so the idea is that if everybody who's using Firefox now has all the, these lookups that they want to keep secret, they can't be secret right until the very end, because when they reach the other end, Cloudflare has to open up that encryption to see I what see. site it is you want to look up. Uh, right, so what okay. people are saying is, okay, I'm worried, I might be a little bit worried about my ISP in France, Belgium, South Africa, the UK, wherever, knowing yeah. where I'm browsing. Yeah. But now there's this one company that's gonna know where everybody's browsing. Yeah. And whilst Cloudflare have made some promises that they won't keep data longer than 24 oh, hours, right, okay. et cetera, et cetera, it, it's kind of like people are saying, well, you're making this shift from something that I could at least predict yeah. to the to something that I don't get to choose. Okay. So Google have taken a slightly different approach. They've got a range of different providers. Okay. And unless you already use one of those providers, they won't upgrade you to the encrypted version. 
Oh, so right, they won't okay. change you without you knowing. And Firefox, to be fair, it's fairly easy to go and turn this feature off if you don't want okay. to. Okay. And what about if you're using a different browser? Would you recommend using Chrome or Firefox based on these moves, or would you say continue to use whatever your preferred browser I think, is? I think people choose browsers for very different reasons. They choose browsers for what they think about the speed, for their compatibility right. with sites. Sometimes at work, you're told, oh, we only support this or yeah. that or the other. Mm -hmm. You get people, who are, you know, Mac fans who are diehard Safari users. Yeah. If you're on an iPhone, you have to basically pretty much have to use Safari yeah. or a browser based upon it. Um, so I wouldn't suggest switching to these browsers, those browsers specifically for this purpose. Okay. Because in time you'll be able to presumably be able to change your computer, the, let the, make the operating system use a similar system if okay. you want to secure your DNS requests. My opinion, particularly for Firefox, as I said on the podcast, it's it has a it's a what you might call a significant minority browser. It has less than half the less than half the people in the world use it. Okay. Chrome is the Chrome is the sort of two hundred kg gorilla, if you oh, like. Right, okay. But so if you've already chosen Firefox, then you're yeah. probably doing so so that you're running a browser that's made by a browser company, right? Rather than a browser that's made by, say, Apple, Google, or Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the reasons I chose it. Like variety can, yeah. can help, mm -hmm. and in that case, this move is probably a good one for you because it does mean that if you decide you don't trust Cloudflare or you don't want them doing your DNS lookups, mm -hmm. you can always turn this feature off. But it does mean that nobody else in the coffee shop can just casually look at all the websites you're visiting. So that's one criticism. Okay. Another criticism is it's kind of an imperfect solution because the browser's doing its, webs its domain name lookups, its server name lookups over HTTPS because this is a feature built into the browser, mm -hmm. but your operating system, the computer itself, isn't. So what you do need to remember is if you have this feature turned on your browser, mm -hmm. all the other stuff that goes on on your computer is still sniffable at the coffee shop for which sites you visit. So they'll be able to see, they might be able to see a list of uh, server names that might indicate where you're getting your security updates from, which yeah. would say what security product they're using. They might see all the other things that you do with apps that aren't browsers. Ah, so it's okay. important that at the moment, this is a feature that just Google and Mozilla are putting into their browsers. Yeah. And the reason that the browsers are leading the way is quite simply that you're only using your browser when you're online, yeah. and the browser is perfectly used to making HTTPS connections for everything, because everyone expects that, so they figured, well, let us try and lead the way in showing that encrypted DNS, encrypted name lookups, they are, you know, they're practicable, they won't bog your computer down, the performance will be satisfactory, and I guess that both from Google and Mozilla's point of view, they're kind of hoping that maybe the operating system vendors will follow suit, and right. maybe also that more and more ISPs will start to provide this service. Yeah. That means that anyone between you and your ISP can't just get an idea of basically who you're talking to on the yeah. phone, as it were. So do you have any general advice for users out there on how they can keep their browsing private? Well, ob obviously, what the important thing to remember is this keeps the this helps to keep the list of sites you browse to out of the hands of anybody in the coffee shop, right? Um, anybody who might have hacked the router at the hotel you're using. Mm -hmm. um, and it also means that, it, of course, if you're in a country where, like the United Kingdom, where ISPs are required to keep a list of your DNS lookups, mm. the, the government insists that they do this. They say, well, we don't want to snoop on every, we don't want to snoop on everybody's traffic, but mm. we would like you to keep a list of where people went just in case yeah. we need to come and have a look I later see. and get a warrant and say it looks as though this person was browsing to dodgy sites. Right, in other words, they okay. can make inferences from it. And some people don't like that, so they figure, well, I'll use this feature because then uh, my, my, the, the, my DNS, my name lookup history will go somewhere yeah. else. Of course, it still goes somewhere else. So, say Cloudflare or Google or IBM or Cisco, they offer, yeah. they offer DNS over HTTPS service for free. Mm -hmm. Those companies will know. So somebody will still know what your browsing habit is. Okay, so if you are in a coffee shop and someone can see what you're browsing, can they, is there a way that they can basically link it to you as an individual then? Or is it well, just more that they Of course, can... when they see you browsing somewhere, they'll, they'll, if they can sniff your traffic, some coffee yeah. shops go out of the way to prevent that happening. Yeah. So that each person's connection is, is kind of firewalled off from everybody else's. Okay. It's a good precaution, but not all yeah. of them do. You, 
to be fair, you can see which IP number you're connecting to. So okay, you know which fine. computer you're connecting to. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, you might be able to look that number up, like do use a sort of reverse DNS lookup. Okay. And you'll see, oh, that number is such and such a website. Okay. Generally speaking, that gives you much, much less detail. Mm -hmm. For example, if you were in a coffee shop and you were browsing, say, to nakedsecurity.sophos.com, yeah. and you could see that the IP number, the, the server that the person was connecting to, mm -hmm. when you went to look it up, because Naked Security is hosted by Automatic, the WordPress.com, the IP, what that means is that you'd get our site mixed in with all the other sites that are hosted at that address. So there's a little bit less detail. Right, okay. So fine. generally, it's not that bad. Yeah. And so that's the problem that the, the thing with DNS lookups, it kind of gives you a hint of the things that you might be interested mm. in. And of course, tying it to you is possible because it, a cook who's got you actually in their site can do it at a coffee shop because they can see right, you yeah. click the browser yeah, and yeah. then <laughs> that instant the DNS lookup comes. Yeah. And if everyone else is sitting, talking right. to their buddies and not they pressing a computer, it's pretty obvious that computer is you. Yeah. So unfortunately, you know, tying things from a traffic log back to an individual on a, on a small size network is surprisingly easy because it's pretty obvious like right. who's busy and who's not busy. Okay. Um, also, lots of people end up, you know, they might be, if they're browsing on their phone, you know, lots of people when they walk in the coffee shop and it, their Bluetooth comes up and it says uh, Alice's iPhone, and then they yeah. suddenly go on. <laughs> then you suddenly see them trying to connect to the Wi-Fi. Okay. Guess what? Yeah, they figured fun. out you okay. know, whose iPhone is connecting now, yeah. and they figured out who's Alice okay. and whatnot. So right. the, there are the, just doing DNS over HTTPS. It's not like it, it doesn't give you privacy on a plate. It's not like yeah. something that suddenly makes your browsing private. Okay. You're still going to a website. You're yeah. still perhaps logging in on that website. You can still be fished because you can put in your oh, password on the wrong site. Okay. So it doesn't affect what you choose to type in. It doesn't stop you going to a fake news site and getting fake news results. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop you going somewhere and accidentally uploading a picture that you later think, golly, I wish I hadn't done that. Right. It just means that there's a little bit less data leaking out about what you're interested in general. So yeah. think of it in the same sort of fashion as suppressing your CLI, your caller ID on your telephone. Okay. So when you call people, it doesn't always come up with, to say. Yeah. It, it's sort of more in the line of that. Okay. But it is, it is a, you can see why the browser makers are doing it, because it's an irony that they're securing all your web filtering traffic, but they're not securing the list of sites that you went to. Okay, so are there any other little takeaways of advice you'd give people? I think if you, particularly if, you, if you're already one of those significant minority who are using Firefox, it's because you've chosen it. You know, Google Chrome comes with Google stuff. Microsoft Edge comes with Microsoft stuff. Safari comes with mm -hmm. Apple stuff. So if you're already using Firefox, it's because you've made a, an informed decision of your own to go and try this alternative browser. Right. I would suggest that this is good for you because it's actually going to keep just a little bit of, of information about what you're doing and when you're doing it out of the hands of anyone who happens to be around about you at the time. Okay. And if you decide you don't like it, it's fairly easy to go into preferences and turn it off. Okay. And pretty much the same with Chrome. Yeah. When it comes into the product, read up on how it works, decide whether you want to use it or not. Mm. And I think most people probably decide on the balance of probabilities that it's, it's worth having. So would you expect the other browsers now to follow suit and this will become a norm for all of them? That's an interesting question. Like, you mean Microsoft will build it into yeah. Edge and Apple build it into Safari? Right. Well, they make the operating system uh -huh. as well on which their browser runs. Like, you can't run Edge on Mac OS on your Apple, right. and you can't run Safari on your on Windows anymore. You used right. to get Safari yeah. for Windows, but not anymore, not for years. Okay. So you would imagine that if they wanted to follow suit with this, they'd actually provided as an option in the operating system yeah. itself, and then all of your DNS lookups for the whole operating system would work in a secure fashion, and then you won't need the feature in the browser. Okay. So I imagine, it, it, and that would be better, right? Because it means that you're secure, for example, on your mobile device, or if mm -hmm. you're on a laptop, every program you're using, because not only browsers that make HTTPS connections, yeah. lots of apps do, like when they do product updates, when they get help files, when they display stuff, Many people are using the web as a way of delivering that these days, for the most part. Um, so yeah, if, 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 the, if operating systems themselves start securing DNS, then this feature won't be needed in the browser. And I presume then the browser vendors can simply turn it off because it takes a little bit of load off the browser. Right. So maybe it's just a way for Mozilla and Google to say to everybody else, hey, if you like this, we, 
it shows that collectively we can be more secure and maybe, hey, Microsoft, hey, Apple, what do you think? Okay, cool. Well, that's all we've got time for today. But if you do have any questions on this topic, then comment them below and we will get back to you after the video. And uh, thanks Don't for watching. Don't forget to say, <laughs> listen to the podcast. It's making fun of me because com. I promote this podcast like every five minutes, but it's great. So if you'd like to listen, there's a new yep. episode available. Yes. Why not? <laughs> Why not? It's Thanks. a great podcast. It's a great podcast. I think we're allowed to say We're both great. on it, so it's wonderful. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Bye.